Yo there guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video here on Nasha Vlogs. Um, this video, I'm going to be talking about Portons Park's uh, proposed 2022 new investment, which is rumoured to be a brand new coaster. So, a few weeks back, um, a YouTube channel called Coaster Connection showed a sort of a uh, Tornado Springs sort of construction update. Uh, for those who don't know to about Tornado Springs, Tornado Springs is Portland Park's brand new area, which was due to open in May this year, uh, but sadly was uh, delayed due to the coronavirus pandemic until March 2021. The timescale of its delay is actually 10 months. And it's it was weird, I think, over the summer seeing like all the rides sort of testing when really they could have been opened. Um, but credit to Poulton's for not, um, you know, opening, but still giving us little teasers with Tornado uh, Springs with Storm Chaser testing. So yes, as I was saying, Tornado Springs is due to open on the 19th of March, 2021. We're hopefully going to be there for opening day of Tornado Springs. Uh, this is We were supposed to originally be going for its opening day if it was to open in 2020. But because that was delayed, um, we decided to wait until they announced an opening date for Tornado Springs in uh, for 2021. And they did. They actually announced it pretty quickly, to be honest, their new sort of date. But I'm going to be talking about Portland Park's potential 2022 uh, edition, which, as I said earlier, was room, is rumoured to be a coaster. Now, this is also, this new 2022 investment is rumoured to be an extension to Tornado Springs. Now, this, if this does end up being an extension to Tornado Springs, this won't be the first time that this has happened. Um, in 2018, those who have been on this channel uh, since the start, you may remember back in 2018, uh, Poulton's Park added two brand new rides as part of an extension to the ever popular Peppa Pig world in 2018, following um, a seven year gap of investment in that area. Obviously, within the, the seven years between 2011 and 2018, the park did open multiple rides and areas over, over those years. Obviously, they opened Lost Kingdom predominantly in 2016. Um, I will be doing a video on um, potentially could we be seeing a Lost Kingdom extension because personally, I'd love to see an extension to Lost Kingdom. I feel like they really could if they wanted to, but um, I think Lost Kingdom isn't a priority at the moment because obviously, they did Lost Kingdom. From what I've heard, Tornado Springs has sort of been in the works in between uh, Lost Kingdom opening and the Peppa Pig World extension in 2018. So, uh, so it's all been in the background for the last couple of years. Um, so if this new 2022 investment, which can I just clarify, if it is 2022, which the park have started teasing, uh, or park management have started teasing, should I say, for 2022. That would mean this is the first time that Poulton's have done in quite a while that they've, well, they did do this a couple of years ago where they had two back to back investments. So a perfect example is in 2014, uh, well, between 2013 and 2015, uh, they did that perfectly. So in 2013, they opened uh, the Show Street 4D Cinema as an investment. And then in 2014, they opened the Victorian Carousel, which, can I just say, at Christmas, it's beautiful. Or even at night, it's beautiful. And then in 2015, in the run-up to Tornado, uh, not Tornado Springs, in the run-up to Lost Kingdom opening, they re-themed an area of the park where the Caterpillar Coaster was in the Winded and Willows, 
water attraction to turn into Critter Creek. So you had like three years of back-to-back -back investments. Well, technically four years if you want to count um, Lost Kingdom. So four years of back-to-back -back investment. You know, that's pretty brilliant. I don't think I've seen a park do that in a while where they've constantly had like an investment every year for four years. Whether that's a big investment, small investment, you still got an investment coming through. But as I was saying, the 2020 in this video, I'm going to be predicting what potentially this rumored new coaster for 2022's uh, Tornado Springs extension could be. So the first thing we have to take into consideration is the space that the coaster is going to be going in is very small and it looks like it's only going to be that coaster. It's not going to be any other rides at the moment. It looks like it's just going to be an additional coaster which means Tornado Springs will be the second area at Portland's Park to have two roller coasters in one area. The other area that has this is Lost Kingdom. In Lost Kingdom, you have Flight of the Pterosaur and Velociraptor pretty much right next to each other. And then when this new coaster goes in, you in 2022, potentially, you will have Storm Chaser and whatever this new coaster may be. Um, I don't think I've expressed enough how much I'm really looking forward to Storm Chaser. It's it's some it will be the park's first ever Mac Ride roller coaster. So it'll be interesting to see how where they go down. Obviously, Mac Rides uh did build the two new rides for the Pepper Big World extension in 2018. So this is now the second time that Poltons have worked with Mac. Um and there were rumors even when the Pepper Big World expansion opened that there could potentially be a Mac Rides coaster coming to the park or another Mac Rides investment. They said they'll be working with them for the next few years. So something was happening. So the area where this coaster is, it's very small, as I've said. It looks like it's only going to be the one coaster. So what potential things could be going in? I'm going to be giving my top three predictions on what I think this new coaster could be, going from least likely up to likely. So enough of me rambling, let's get straight into the first one, which is the least likely to be the next coaster investment in the potential Tornado Springs expansion for 2022. So my least likely prediction for what this new coaster investment potentially for an extension or expansion, sorry, to um, Tornado Springs in 2022, in my opinion, is going to be a Zamperla Junior Twister Coaster, predominantly a clone of Twistosaurus at Flamingoland. Now, just a couple of facts as you can see about Twistosaurus. It opened in May 2013, it has a track length of 574.2 feet, has a height of 26.3 feet, top speed of 17.4 miles per hour. Now, those who have done Twistosaurus, you know, it's, as you can see, it's quite a compact coaster. Now, yes, it's quite a compact coaster, and it could go into that small space. The reason why I think it's the least likely is because Tornado Springs already has a spinning coaster and you don't really want two different types of spinning coasters. You know, you don't want to get another spinning coaster in the same area where there's a spinning coaster already there. Um, so this is why I think it's least likely, although I would like to see something like this, a Zamperla uh, spinning coaster at uh, Poulton's or at any other park, I personally don't think it will go into Tornado Springs in 2022. So my next prediction, which is potentially likely to go in this new area, we, is potentially a clone of Rhombus Rocket from uh, Fantasy Island, which is a WGH transportation powered coaster. A couple of facts about Rumbus Rocket. It has a track length of 967.8 feet, it has a height of 17.1 feet, a top speed of 28 miles an hour, 
and a duration of 86 seconds and a capacity of nearly of nearly 750 rides per hour. Now, despite Rumble Rocket being quite a big coaster, it would be great to see the park do have a powered coaster because you, if I'm honest, there's not many of these sort of powered coasters in the UK, in my opinion. And, and also, in my opinion, I think uh, powered coasters are very underrated. I think I think people um, overlook powered coasters, in my opinion. If we're gonna, I'm gonna say this: if if they're gonna put in a powered coaster or a clone of a powered coaster, I think a perfect example for the space that they could do one of these in is Flying Fish at Fall Park. You know which is a Mack Rides um, powered coaster. Like, I would love to see a clone of, of um, Flying Fish. Like, I'm going to say this. For, at Fort Park, Flying Fish is one of those coasters that nowadays gets overlooked. You know, um, I, I quite enjoy Flying Fish. You know, yes, it's a family coaster, but it's fun. Like... It is fun, especially if you get a night ride on it during um, Fright Nights. I did uh, back in 2017, and a night ride on it was weird. Like, normally, family coasters aren't always great at night rides. But Flying Fish is, an, <laughs> is in my way, in, in, in my opinion, an essential family um, night ride. Mark, it just it's a weird atmosphere you know you got swarm in the background and then you got stealth and then you just got flying fish slap bang in the middle um but a couple of facts about flying fish it has a uh, track length of 767.8 feet a height of 20.7 feet top speed of 18.8 miles an hour obviously um fun fact flying fish uh, used to be at one point where stealth was and then they took it out um another location it was in it used to have a space theme when it was called space station zero uh which is in uh, the big arcade just outside the dockyard that's where it was at one point you know that was always interesting to see um but yeah I do think it would be nice to see a clone of flying fish. Obviously not fish themed, but I reckon they could theme it in um, to Tornado Springs one way or another. Maybe to theme it to a creature in the Wild West or maybe a tumbleweed. I, I, I don't know. That, I, I'm not the best at um, coming up with themes for rides, but I'm sure Poulton's his, um, team would be able to do something like that. And the the type of coaster that um, Flying Fish is, the last time we got uh, that investment, like that type of coaster, the last one of those coasters to be built, the exact clone of, of um, Flying Fish to open, you know, was back in 2007. So we haven't had one of those clones of flying fish in 13 years or when when it comes along, 15 years. So it would be good to see one of those come back to another park. And then you would have technically three versions of those coasters in the UK. But yeah, like I say, I think I'm going to go with a, a Mack Ride powered coaster as a likely investment. And then in my opinion, what I think will be the most likely, and this is my own opinion, and it may sound stupid, but I would love to see, as part of this expansion, a Pinfari Mighty Mini Mega. Now, the reason why I say this is a Mighty Mini Mega up at Adventure Island uh, in South End here in the UK, um, which uh, we, we got to experience back in uh, the summer after lockdown, is such an underrated coaster. It is such an underrated coaster. Uh, just a few stats. It has a track length of 764.4 feet. It has a maximum height of 30.2 feet. Top speed of 24.6 miles an hour. A duration of 50 seconds and 2.2 uh, G-force. 
and it has a capacity of 700 riders per hour. You know, like, I think a Mighty Mini Mega or maybe an exact clone of the one at Adventure Island at Poulton's would go really well because these, as you can see, these are really compact coasters. And as I said, the, the one at Adventure Island, the reason why I think it is so underrated is because if you did not know, it used to be like, like a normal coaster on the ground. But then in 2010, they took it down and then built it on top of an arcade. There's two coasters built on top of an arcade. You don't get that in the UK. I don't think you get any other coaster or any coaster that I know of that's built on top of an arcade. Definitely in the UK, I don't think any other like coaster has been built on top of an, ar on an arcade. And why not? Who wouldn't want to build a coaster on top of an arcade? Yeah, maybe downtime might be a bit more, but why not? <laughs> but yeah, I think a Mighty Mini Mega is going to be probably the most likely. Like I say, these are like my own opinions. You guys can comment below your top three below. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to see uh, what they end up doing in 2022 if it is a coaster investment. And well, there are supports going in, so it does look like it will be a coaster. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I'd love to hear your predictions down below. Let me know. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been Nasha. This has been another video on Nasha Vlogs. Make sure you subscribe as let's try and get to 400 by the start of the 2021 season in March, as that would be great to start the new season on such a huge landmark. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching Nasha Vlogs. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe. Peace out.